It came out last week that Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, who is now in deep federal investigation shit, only had three clients in the past year, right? The president, who Cohen helped to pay off a porn star that he had an affair with. Uh, his second client, a major GOP fundraiser named Elliot Broidy, who Cohen also helped to pay off a playmate that he had an affair with, right? And then Michael Cohen, Cohen had one more client, right? Out of seven billion people, seven billion people, who could have wanted to join this club <laughs> and use Michael Cohen as a lawyer last year? Only one other person did. And this person's identity was a complete mystery until today. This is CNN Breaking News. We are now getting word the lawyer for the president, Michael Cohen, has just disclosed in court that the client who had requested to remain unnamed was Sean Hannity of Fox News. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it turns out Michael Cohen's secret client was Sean Hannity, which, I'm sorry, is not a good look. You know, right now, Sean Hannity's probably on the phone with his wife, like, hey, honey, it's so weird how I use the guy who pays off mistresses to get me out of that parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, right? Hello? 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 <laughs> Just think about how, uh, how unethical this is for a moment, right? Hannity has been reporting on this Michael Cohen story from the beginning, from the beginning, but he conveniently never mentioned that Cohen was his guy, which even for Sean Hannity is pretty shady. I mean, even Instagram models have higher ethical standards. Because they'll be like, drink tummy tea. By the way, I'm sponsored by tummy tea. They tell you what it is, right? And I'm not expecting him to aspire to the levels of the Kardashians, but come on, Sean. <laughs> and I'll tell you what else, I'll tell you what else. Once you know that Hannity has personal skin in the game, uh, like with Cohen, it's fun to go back and look at everything he said about the FBI raid, because now we can see that Hannity wasn't just mad, he was scared. President Trump's longtime personal attorney, Michael Cohn, just had his office, his home, and his hotel that he was staying in raided by the FBI today. This is an unprecedented abuse of power. Cohn's payment is a perfectly legitimate business move. Mueller's witch hunt investigation is now a runaway train careening off the track, spinning out of control. If you voted for Donald Trump, you better get buckled up, because this is going to be a rough ride. You know, now that we know he was working with Cohen, that looks less like a news show and more like a guy really stressed giving himself a pep talk. It's just like, come on. <laughs> we gotta get buckled up. This is gonna be a rough ride. Hoo-ha! <laughs> oh. <laughs> but let's move on. Let's move on. You know, on a normal weekend, America and its allies launching 105 missiles into Syria would be the only news that everyone would be talking about. But there are no more normal weekends. So instead, the story dominating the headlines was ex-FBI director James Comey's new book, A Higher Loyalty, the most hotly anticipated book since the sequel to Everyone Poops. Everyone Poops <laughs> 2. Yeah. It turns out some people don't poop. So, to promote the book, last night Comey sat down with America's most respected leprechaun, George Stephanopoulos, <laughs> in a primetime interview as well. And Comey said all the things that we already know about Donald Trump. You know, he said he's immoral, he said he's a liar, he said he mistreats women. It's all the stuff that got Trump elected. But what did raise an eyebrow <laughs> was when Comey revealed how he told Trump about the PP tape. I'm about to meet with a person who doesn't know me, has just been elected president of the United States, and I'm about to talk to him about allegations that he was involved with prostitutes in Moscow. I did not go into the business about um, people peeing on each other. And he interrupted, started talking about it. You know, do I look like a guy who needs hookers? I didn't answer that, and I just moved on. No, no, no. No, President Trump, of course you don't look like a guy who needs hookers. You look like a guy who chooses hookers. Totally different. <laughs> totally different. Now, the reason Comey says he wrote this book is that, as the title suggests, he believes that as a lawman, it's his duty to share the unbiased truth with America. And throughout the interview, he reminded us how noble he is. I actually thought, as bad as this will be for me personally, this is my obligation to protect the FBI and the Justice Department. I was trying to be honest and clear with the American people. It really was the right thing to do. And if I wasn't honest about that, how am I achieving the goal of showing the American people this is your justice system working in the right way? I'm not trying to help a candidate or hurt a candidate. I'm trying to do the right thing. Trying to make decisions with an eye, not on politics, but on those higher values. Wow. This dude is so loyal to America that when he dies, he's just gonna turn into a bald eagle. 
and fly majestically into an apple pie. <laughs> so powerful. Like, he really means it, guys, because even when Comey got surprise fired, he didn't think about himself. All he thought about was USA. Stunned by the news, Comey heads to the airport. It would be his last flight on the FBI jet. So you're in that private jet, basically alone? What did you do? I drank red wine from a paper coffee cup and just looked out at the lights of the country I love so much as we flew home. You hear that? You hear that? Flying home in that private jet after being fired, and the only thing that Comey could think about was how much he loves this country. Yeah. In that private jet, feeling that. You realize that combination of bawling and emotion is something you usually only find in a Drake song. <laughs> it literally sounds like the lyrics of it. it. Sounds like something Drake would say. It's like, sipping on this wine, country on my mind, thinking about the time when the president was lying. <laughs> it feels like a Drake song. <laughs> and now, and now look, now look. Here's the thing. I know how Comey is trying to present himself, okay? But it's hard for us to believe that this is a selfless, unbiased expose written for the people and for the benefit of the people when you're also throwing grade school shade like this. It was the first time you met Donald Trump. What was your impression? He had impressively coiffed hair that looks to be all his. I confess I stared at it pretty closely. And my reaction was, must take a heck of a lot of time in the morning. His tie was too long as it always is. He looked slightly orange up close with small white um, half moons under his eyes, which I assume are from tanning goggles. You see, now, that's funny, but that doesn't sound like an impartial lawman. That sounds like a guy who got fired from White Castle talking trash about his old boss. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> it's like, man, that dude smelled like onions before he got to work. <laughs> and look, don't get me wrong, I'm the last person to tell anyone not to trash Trump, okay? But I do think that being petty hurts Comey's credibility. Like, you can't take the high road and the low road at the same time. Because let's be honest, Comey knew that roasting Trump would help him sell books, okay? And if you're trying to make money, then just make the money. Don't act like you're doing it for our sake. You know, basically, Comey, is, he's, like, hiding the money aspect of this whole thing. It's almost like if Braveheart was like, we must not give in to tyranny! We must fight against oppression! And we must do it with the swords we buy on BraveheartWeaponsDepot.com! <laughs> I promise you this war has nothing to do with me getting rich. It's about a higher loyalty. <laughs> By the way, use my promo code, super brave, super brave. Now charge!